This is Relic Blade, or at least some of the awesome minis for it. Obviously, they are not yet painted, but while they patiently wait for their turn under the brush, I can still hype the game to family and friends with these brilliant hand-drawn minis straight from my 2D printer. All I need now is a board to play on, which is what we're doing today. Hey there, hobby friends. I'm Jared, and this is Caffeinated Miniatures. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I was initially thinking of building this Relic Blade board on actual board, you know, wood. But after watching a Black Magic Craft video where Jeremy built a board on some dollar store EVA foam floor tiles, I sped off to the same store and got some for myself. Now Relic Blade is played on a two foot by two foot surface. And these tiles are a weird size. So I'll just, just zoom out a bit, better. Just cut out a one by two tile. There we go. Plus one more. Then I grabbed the hot glue gun, also a dollar store purchase, and glued the two tiles together. I went with the hot glue gun here because it was cheap, quick, and easy. Contact cement could have worked really well, but I went with the less toxic option. To cover the foam and add some texture, I pretty well copied Jeremy's process, squeezing some latex dap into a container with a couple sizes of sand and some brown and black paint, then mixing till it hurts. After dumping this goopy, gritty mixture down, I roughly covered the mat, not really trying to get it too smooth. I tried using a roller to unify the texture, but it kind of created too wavy a texture that I, I didn't love. So I gently smoothed it over with this putty knife. In retrospect, had I used a roller with a much lower nap and absolutely saturated it with water, I think it would have worked quite well. I wanted to create a path or road, but not something man-made like cobblestone. So I grabbed a narrow roller and pressed it into the goop with a decent amount of pressure, rolling out a path. To add a little more interest, I cut a few rocks out of some XPS foam and pressed them into the texture paste creation. Then roughly cover them with some of the leftover goop. The latex dap and the XPS foam were the only things I did not get from the dollar store. However, at the Home Depot, the dap was like $3 a tube and I got a two foot by eight foot sheet of that XPS foam for like $15. So I feel like they still kind of count. I left it overnight to cure and came back the next day to add some paint. I grabbed the brown and white dollar store acrylic paints and mixed up a lighter brown for the dirt. Then used a cheap brush to enhance the texture. After loading some paint onto the brush, I wiped most of it off, then gently brushed all over the board, avoiding the pathway. This roughly highlighted the texture and added some depth and visual interest. Feeling happy with that dirt, I mixed up a dark gray for the pathway, using the black and white paints, then slapped it all over the pathway and rocks. After this had dried, I mixed up a much lighter gray and used the same dry brushing method as before to highlight and accentuate some of that texture. The board was really starting to take shape, but I knew I needed some more variety. I needed grass. And once again, the dollar store came in clutch. I mixed together some dried parsley and basil. Two bottles of parsley to one of the basil. This gave a variety of texture and looked green without being too green. In order to adhere this to the board, I thinned down some white glue with water, making it easier to brush on and spread it out on the board. And I did this in a few small sections to keep the glue from starting to dry before adding the grass. I didn't overthink this, I just added some random patches of grass and it was looking all right. I felt like I needed another small detail and looking at one of those cheap dollar store brushes, I had an idea. Maybe those bristles could be grass. I cut off small sections of bristles and attached them around some of the rocks with the hot glue gun. The first one had a bit too much glue, but I got better. I wanted to maintain the playability of this mat, so I only added the tall grass around the rocks so they wouldn't interfere with movement or terrain placement. The last thing to do was seal everything and lock it in place. So I hosed the whole thing down with a mix of PVA glue and water, being sure to fully saturate everything. And after leaving it to dry overnight, I had a complete terrain board.
Well, there you go, a two by two terrain board. The first board I have ever made. You might be thinking to yourself, why not just buy a pre-printed neoprene mat? Which is valid and there are loads of great options out there. However, where's the fun in that? Besides, this actually costs less to make. If you are wondering where those sweet, sweet, hand-drawn 2D minis came from, they are the brilliant work of the man behind Relic Blade, Sean Sutter. You can actually get those minis and a free demo of the game from the website. And I will link all those details down below. Give them a follow, do all the things, you won't regret it. As always, if you made it this far, you are an absolute legend. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more mediocre hobby content. And thanks for watching. You are awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.